Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there Hunters, welcome back to the Gunner's Guild. Since Capcom did not nerf Bow like I had hoping they would, this is the new meta, so let's start by just diving right into the wonderful world of being horribly Boken. So it's been a while since last time I actually covered Bow meta stuff, and I haven't played much of Bow and Rise, so let's do a quick refresher on some information, what changed, and how we're going to be setting up our bows. So the first thing we're going to start is with food skills and stamina. So the first thing you need to know is that stamina cap got increased here in Rise coming from World. It's now a 75% cap compared to the 50% reduction cap we had in World. However, you won't be getting the 75% without a hunting horn buff. But if you know a horner, grab them and force them to play that stamina song. Now without horns, we get about 64.5% reduction cap, which is still pretty huge. In order to get this ourselves, we're going to need to eat for Dongo Fighter, which is essentially our new black belt. It's 20% stamina reduction drink a dash juice, and then have con 4 on, because the percent reductions are multiplicative and not additive, so you kind of have to get a lot. Now maxing your stamina reduction is huge because we need stamina for basically everything, and it's effectively a secondary source of damage outside of direct damage skills, so make sure it's a priority. For your other food skills, Marksman works, it'll give us about a 20-25% chance to get 10% more damage per volley, and either Booster for a short raw buff, Weakener for reduced monster HP, and of course, Dongo Fighter. So moving on, we're going to go into switch skills really quick. Absolute power shots can be used if you want to get a KO in a fight, and since we have more stamina reduction now, it's actually not a huge burden on our stamina anymore. Your choice though. Do remember that it's only good for about 1 KO, sometimes 2 on the longer fights like Elder Dragons, so you have to kind of weigh that against all your power shots and aerial shots having increased stamina cost. But it is an actual option, so take your pick. For the slide, you can effectively do the animation cancel with both regular slide and dodgeball, so your choice there too. Now if you're unfamiliar with the animation cancel, this is the thing I hate. After you slide, you can press ZR to shoot your rapid volley, and the moment you start the animation for the rapid, press A to do your power shot, which will then cancel all of the leftover rapid animation and go right into power shot, but you still get all the arrows of the rapid fire, so you can effectively get two volleys in at the same frames, which is pretty broken. So depending on how fast you are is how effective that skill is going to be. Now the main difference between dodgeball and slide is distance moved. Dodgeball is better for fights where you can stay in the same spot and don't need to chase down a monster. The parry off dodgeball grants two charges so you can keep that up a lot better than the dodge slide thing. I would recommend running evade extender though because you literally don't move anywhere without it. Now our regular slide is better suited for fights so we can actually stagger lock monsters or those that flinch backwards a lot so that we can keep pushing in on them and be because we can actually recharge our shots that way rather than not have to rely on getting a parry. It is matchup dependent so do find what suits you better. I would recommend using evade extender on dodge bolt but not normal slide because then you start going really far and then you're getting outside your crit distance and it's just a mess. Now for the silk binds, since we can effectively stack frames after the slide, it's far more damage to do the dash dancing rotation than it is to do the aerial shot spam, at least for the time being. Aerial shots is still good, it does have its uses, like if you run out of stamina, you can use the skill to keep up your DPS and regen some of your stamina, plus you can build your arrive and ride too if you want to do that. It is still a worthwhile skill to keep in your arsenal. Focus shot however can be swapped out if you want because it's basically going to instantly refill your stamina when you use it, and that's really good because that's all we want is more stamina. And it has a ton of iframes. I love using this skill to dodge stuff. It's great. So again, toss up, your choice if you want zero DPS and more stamina, or aerial with some DPS and some stamina. Again, choices, and I love having choices. Now as far as Herculean draw goes, while I still don't like this because it consumes two bugs, you can use it to cancel out of the second power shot animation and it does regen some stamina as you're going through it, so you can kind of keep your broken DPS up even longer with this way too. And it's a 10% damage boost which is just icing on the cake here, so again Herculean draw, also good. So all in all, the switch skills, you're pretty much free to use whatever you want, just make sure you pick the right skills for the right situation. I am actually happy with this now, I uh, actually, now that we've played more and understand the meta better, I have a better understanding on how these switch skills work, and they're all actually pretty good. So it does give us some variety in our bow playstyles, and I love that. I know bow's super broken right now, but all these switch skills now are feeling a lot better than I initially gave them credit for, now that we just kind of, you know, know what we're doing. So now that we're done with all the basic foods and skills, let's actually get into the bows that we're going to be picking. 
First, let's discuss Pierce and Spread Bows. Now, Pierce on paper is the best bow now because they actually get six hits on a good Pierce rather than just five, and it's six hits on all ranks of Pierce ammo. The only thing that's gonna change in your Pierce up is the motion value. Now, it is difficult to get enough Pierce ticks in, but some monsters do stand out, like going across Mizu or through Camellios and Nargakuga, maybe even Blow Swings, though he kind of moves a whole lot. Spread bows just can't seem to compete with Pierce because they're pretty inconsistent and very close range, and spread definitely misses a lot more than it should. The fan volley on this thing is so ridiculous that you miss a lot of shots. And with the critical distance on these things, I mean, you're also going to be out of range a lot. Just not a fan in general. Don't like spreads. Spreads are still really good on paper, so if you can make it work for you, great. Not for me. So basically what I'm getting at is that in the right matchup, Pierce should dominate everything. Like, you've seen Nargakuga Bow versus Narwa, and because that thing's got a huge hit zone, and against Mizu because it's got a straight line. So that should be a no-brainer. But we do have two other bows that we can run. Rakhna Kadaki's bow got an upgrade, which gives it a pretty good amount of raw and element, but also Pierce 5, which is pretty big. Now because of this and the extra slots it gets, this thing on paper has some obscene damage on things like a Muldron, Gosharog, or Camellios, assuming you can line up the shots properly. So I actually do like this Pierce bow a lot. Then there's Kushala's bow. I personally don't like this bow because it loses so much fucking ROM. The only thing it's got going for it is the Kushala Soul, which is essentially Repeat Offender. If you're unfamiliar with Repeat Offender, it basically gives your first hit 25% affinity, and then after five hits and each pierce tick counts, it goes up to 30% for three seconds. And if you don't hit anything for three seconds, it goes back down. Basically, it's a permanent 25% affinity at the very least, which is great, but 170 raw is horrible. The only thing I can see this thing really being useful on is something like Diablos. But that being said, I mean, those are your good three Pierce bows. So if you want to run Pierce, here's your good options. You can run Rampage Pierce, but I don't know. I just, I don't think it's as good as these ones. Now, I'm not really going to go into spreads a whole lot because again, I don't like them. I find them kind of inferior. Even the elemental exploit bows, they were cool while they lasted, but we're scaling raw now. Now for rapid bows, we're pretty much everything Rampage. Rampage, all elements, Rampage, everything. When you make your Rampage Bow, you do have to do your option of Elemental Boost 1 or Attack Boost 3. It's basically 8 raw versus 5 element. It's matchup dependent again, but for most part, they're going to be doing pretty much the same damage. They're going to be like within one or two of each other. No big deal. Pick whatever you want. I put elements because it's easier to scale raw at this point, so get in the element where I can. Now don't forget to add exhaust coats on your Rampage Bows unless you really want those paracoats because just adding exhaust coats gives you 10 more raw to the bow and you don't need coatings to equip, it's just flat 10 raw for having this option, so make sure you put that on. Now in regards to the old Rapid Bows, Ice is still great, but being on Rapid 3, it really fucking hurts and the extra raw element we got for the new Rampage upgrades basically is having it outbeat Ice just by a little bit more. Now Anchanth for Fire is still a monster. Rampage Bow here does basically the same damage as Anjanath, so you have to take your pick. You can have negative 20% affinity with Anjanaths and get the extra level 2 and level 1 slot, or you can have the Rampage Bow with normal affinity and no slots. Your call, but the negative affinity does make the Rampage Bow slightly better in DPS. Now and lastly for the Toby Kadachi Bow, the only matchup where this is still actually usable over the Rampage Thunder is against Nargakuga because it's got horrible raw hit zones anyways. But even there, it's pretty damn close to the same damage. I just find it easier to use all Rampage Bows for Rapids at this point, so I don't have to change sets at all. So yeah, Pierce Bows, Rampage Rapids, that's where we're at. So now we can get into set building, and boy did our sets change, not just for bows though. Now having the ability to basically make any skill except Mighty Bow decoration kind of changed around some of our armor pieces, which is pretty cool. It also took a huge burden off our charm slots, so we don't need to make good charms anymore. Actually, right now you can get by with pretty much any charm that has two level two slots and like a level one skill. So like Wex 2, Con 2, Stam Surge, any open slots, whatever you can get. Two slots is pretty much it. So the charm I'm going to be using for these sets is just two level two slots and a level one slot. No skill. Now obviously you can do much better and add in a few points of something extra like crit eye, reload speed, or something else, but this is going to be my base foundation for bow builds. Also do know that because of the nerf to elemental skills and crit element, we don't really do much scaling on that side, All we really want to focus on raw right now because that's kind of where the future is going to be. Charge shot 4 is a 1.7 times raw modifier and we're going to be leaning on that heavily. 
From here on, you're going to want to add your skills to your base armor sets, and you're going to have a few options. Reload up is actually a really good utility skill for bow if you have two free level one slots, because what it does, it'll make your coatings auto equip. So no more swapping coats and doing the animations. It's a great time save for bow with multiple coats. And trust me, you want it. You can always add more attack boost or critical eye too, is since we do want to scale raw. And you can also try to fit in a point of evade extender for dodge bolt. Uh, and that's pretty much it to be honest. Now the only difference here between like a no skill charm and a god charm is going to be like two or three points of attack boost or crit eye or crit boost, but we don't have 100% crit anyway, so no huge deal. So again, don't worry about your charm, get something decent, and then your sets will be like this, and we're pretty much good to go. So that's basically kind of where we're at with bows right now. They're still insanely strong and pretty much crush every other monster and weapon out there without issue. Uh, I do hope they still get nerfed in the future, but for the time being, I mean, go crazy, people. That's basically all for me. Thanks for watching, and good luck out there, hunters, and whatever you may be hunting.